I'm back. Hi, Freddie. So how is, how's everything been going? Um, I'm going to read to you again, chapters uh, three and four now. Um, but I hope everything is finding, I hope you're finding everything okay and are able to uh, find your way around all this confusing <laughs> uh, learning that we we're trying to do. Um, I miss you guys. You know, it's it's strange what not having you guys here. Um, do you like my new setting? Um, I'll try to pick more exciting places as I go. Hopefully, um, maybe I'll do the gym, or maybe I can even do it outside. Um, but I'll get going. The letters from no one. The escape of the Brazil, uh, Brazilian boa constrictor named Harry, his largest ever uh, punishment. But the time he was allowed out, by the time he was allowed out of the cupboard again, the summer holiday had already started and Dudley had already broken his new video camera, crashed his ro remote control, crashed his remote control airplane and the first time out on his racing bike, he knocked down old Mrs. Uh, Big as, he, as she crossed Privet Drive on her crutches. Harry was gl uh, glad school was over, but there was no escaping Dudley's gang, who visited the house every single day. Piers, Dennis, Malcolm, and, and Gordon were all big and stupid but as Dudley was the biggest and the stupidest of, of the lot. He was a leader. The rest of, the, of them were all quite happy to join in Dudley's favorite sport, Harry hunting. This was why Harry spent as much time as possible out of the house, wandering around and thinking about the end of the holidays, where he could see a tiny ray of hope. When September came, he would be going off to a secondary school, and for the first time in his life, he wouldn't be with Dudley. Dudley had been accepted at Uncle Vernon's old private school, um, Smeltings. Pierce Holkis was going there, too. Harry, on the other hand, was going to uh, Stonewall High, a local public school. Dudley thought this was very funny. They stuff people's they stuff people's head in the toilet the first day at Stonewall, he told Harry. Want to come upstairs and practice? No thanks, said Harry. The poor toilets never had been, had anything as horrible as your head down it. It might be it might be sick. Then he ran before Dudley could work out to work out what he had said. One day in July, Aunt Petunia told Dudley, took Dudley to London to buy his smelting uniform, leaving Harry and Miss Figs. Miss Figs wasn't as bad as usual. It turned out she had broken her leg tripping over one of her cats, and she didn't seem quite as fond of them as before. She let Harry watch television and gave him a bit of chocolate cake that tasted as though she had... Um, had it for several years. That evening, Dudley paraded around the living room for the family in his brand new uniform. Smelting boys wore maroon tail, um, tail coats, orange knickerbockers, which are pants. Knickerbockers are shorter pants that come right to the knees. And flat uh, straw hats called um, boats, um, boat, boaters. She, he also, they also carried um, knobbly sticks used for hitting each other while the teachers weren't looking. This was supposed to be good training for later life. As he looked at Dudley in his new knickerbockers, Uncle Vernon said gruffly that it was the proudest moment of his life. Aunt Petunia burst into tears and said that she couldn't believe that it was her... Um, Ickle uh, Dudleykins. She looked, he looked so handsome and grown up. Harry couldn't trust himself to speak. He thought two of his ribs 
might already have been correct from being from trying not to laugh. There was a horrible smell in the kitchen the next morning when Harry went in for breakfast. It seems to be coming from a large metal tub in the sink. He went to have a look. The tub was full of what looked like dirty rags swimming in gray water. What's this? He asked Aunt Petunia, his her lips tightening as they always did, as if he dared to ask a question. Your new school uniform, he, she said. You, he, uh, Harry looked into the bowl again. Oh, he said, I don't re didn't realize it had to be so wet. Don't be stupid, snapped Aunt Petunia. I'm dying some of Dudley's old things gray for you. It'll look like it'll look just like everyone else's when I'm finished. Harry seriously doubted this, but thought that thought it best not to argue. He went down to the table and tried not to think about how he was going to look in his on his first day of school at Stonewall High, like he was wearing bits of old elephant skin, probably. Dudley and Aunt Uncle Vern came in. Both were um, both would with wrinkle, both with wrinkled noses, because of the smell from um, Harry's new uniforms. Uncle Vernon opened his newspaper as usual, and Dudley banged his melting uh, stick, which he carried everywhere on the table. They heard the click of the mail slot and flipped and a flop of letters on the floor. Get the mail, Dudley, said Uncle Vernon from behind his paper. Make Harry get it. Get the mail, Harry. Make Dudley get it. Poke him with the your smelting stick, Dudley. Harry dodged the smelting stick and went to get the mail. Three things lay on the door map. A postcard from Uncle Vernon's sister, Marge, who is vacationing on the Isle of Wight. A brown envelope that looked like a bill and a letter for Harry. Harry picked up, picked it up and stared at it. His heart sw uh, swinging, twinging like a gigantic rubber band. No one ever in his whole life had written letters to him. Who would? He had no friends, no other relatives. He didn't believe he didn't belong to the li to the library, so he'd never even got ru um, rude notes asking the book for the books back. Yet here it was, a letter addressed so plainly, there could be no mistaken. Mister H. Potter, the cupboard cupboard under the stairs, for Privet Drive, little. Uh, winging a survey. The, elephant, the envelope was thick and heavy, made of yellow, yellowish parchment, and the address was written in emerald green ink. There was no stamp. Turning the envelope over, his hand trembling, Harry saw a purple wax seal bearing a coat of arms, a lion, an eagle, and a badger. And a, and a snake surrounding a large letter H. Hurry up, boy, shouted Uncle Vernon. From the kitchen, what are you doing? Um, checking for letter bombs, he chuckled at his own joke. Harry went back to the kitchen, still staring at his letter. He handed Uncle Vernon a bill and the postcard, sat down, and slowly began to open the yellow envelope. Uncle Vernon ripped open the bill and snorted in disgust and flung, flipped over the postcard. Midge, ill, he informed Aunt Petunia, are a funny, wet week. Dad, uh, Dudley, um, said Dudley suddenly, did Harry get something? Harry was on, was on the point of unfolding his letter, which was uh, written on the same heavy parchment as the envelope, when it was jerked sharply over out of his hands by his uncle vernon that's mine said harry trying to snatch it back who'd be writing to you 
sneered Uncle Vernon, shaking the letter um, open with one hand and glancing at it. His face went from red to green faster than a set of traffic lights, and it didn't stop there. Within seconds, it was grayish white of old, uh, white of old porridge. P -p Petunia, he gasped. Dudley tried to grab the letter to read it, but Uncle Vernon held it high out of his reach. Aunt Petunia took it curiously and read the first line. For a moment, it looked as though she might faint. She clenched at, she clenched at her throat and choked out a noise. Vernon, oh my goodness, Vernon. They, started, they stared at each other, seeming to have forgotten that Harry and Dudley were still in the room. Dudley wasn't used to being ignored. He gave his father a sharp tap on the head with his smelting stick. I want to read that letter, he said loudly. I want to read it, said Harry, Harry furiously, and it's mine. Get out, both of you, um, croaked Uncle Vernon, stuffing the letter back into his envelope. Harry, don't move. I want my letter, he shouted. Harry didn't move. Move. I want my letter, he shouted. Let me see it, demanded Dudley. Out, roared Uncle Vernon. And he took both Harry and Dudley by the scuffs of their necks and threw them into the hall, slamming the kitchen door behind them. Harry and Dudley promptly had a, a, a furious bout, silent fight over who would listen at the keyhole. Dudley won, so Harry... So Harry has his uh, glasses dangling from one ear, laid flat on his stomach to listen at the crock between the door and the floor. Vernon, Aunt uh, Petunia was saying in a quivering voice, look at the address. How could they possibly know where he sleeps? You don't think they're watching the house? Watching? Spying might be, might be following us muttered Uncle Vernon wildly. But what should we do, Vernon? Should we write back? Tell them they, we don't want? Harry could see Uncle Vernon's shiny black shoes pacing up and down the kitchen. No, he said finally. No, we can't, won't ignore it. If we don't get, if they don't get an answer, yes, that's best. We won't do anything. But... I'm not having one in my house, Petunia. Don't you, didn't we swear when we took him in that, that we stump out that dangerous nonsense? That evening, when he got back from work, Uncle Vernon did something he'd never done before. He visited Harry in the cupboard. Where's my letter, said Harry, the moment Uncle Vernon had squeezed through the door. Who's writing to me? No one. It was addressed to you by mistake, said Uncle Vernon uh, shortly. I burned it. It was not a mistake, said Harry angrily. It had, it had my cupboard on it. Silence, yelled Vernon. A couple of spiders fell from the ceiling. He, put a deep, he took in two deep breaths and then forced his face into a smile, which looked quite painful. Uh, yes, Harry, about this cupboard. Your aunt and I have been thinking. You're really getting a bit big for it. We might. Uh, we think it might be nice if you move into Dudley's second bedroom. Why, said Harry. Don't ask questions, snapped his uncle. Tell this, tell this stuff, take this stuff upstairs now. The Dudley's house had four bedrooms. One for Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia, one for visitors, usually Uncle Vernon's sister, Marge, one where Dudley slept and one where Dudley kept all his toys and things that wouldn't fit into his first bedroom. It only took Harry one trip upstairs to move everything he owned from the cupboard to this room. He sat down on the bed and stared around him. Nearly everything in there was broken. A month-old video camera, was laying on the top of the small of a small working uh, tank Dudley had been 
had driven over the next door neighbor's dog. In the corner was Dudley's first ever television set, which he put his foot through when his favorite program had been canceled. There was a large bird cage, which had once held a parrot that Dudley had uh, swapped, swapped at school for a real air rifle which was up on the shelf with with the end all with all the end all bent because Dudley had sat on it other shelves were full of books there were the only things in the room that looked as though they have never been touched from downstairs came the sound of Dudley's bawling at his mother i don't want him in there i need that room make him get out harry sighed and stretched out on the bed. Yesterday, he'd been given anything to have come up here. Today, he'd rather be back in the cupboard with his letter than here without it. The next morning at breakfast, everyone was rather quiet. Dudley was in shock. He screamed, racked his father with his uh, smelting stick, been sick, uh, been sick, um, been sick on purpose, kicked his mother, and threw his tent uh, tortoise through the greenhouse roof. He still hadn't had his room. He still didn't get his room back. Harry was thinking about this time yesterday, and biting bitterly, wishing he had opened the letter in the hall. Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia kept looking at each other darkly. When the mail arrived, Uncle Vernon who seemingly to be trying to be nice to Harry, made Dudley go get it, go and get it. They heard him banging things with his melting sticks all the way down the hall. Then he shouted, There's another one, Mr. H. Potter, the smallest bedroom, fourth privet drive. With a strange cry, Uncle Vernon leapt from his seat and ran down the hall. Harry right behind him. Uncle Vernon had ha had to wrestle to Dudley to the ground to get the letter from him, which was made difficult by the fa fact that Harry had grabbed Uncle Vernon around the neck from behind. After a minute of com uh, confused fighting, in which everyone got a, got hit a lot by the smelting stick, Uncle Ver Vernon straightened up, gasped for breath, with Harry's letter clutched his hand. Go to your cupboard. I mean, your bedroom, he winced at Harriet. Dudley, go, just go. Harry w walked around his new room. Someone knew he had moved out of the cupboard and seemed to know he had to receive the first letter. Surely that meant they'd been try they'll try again, and this time he'd make sure they didn't fail. He had a plan. The... Re a repaired alarm clock rang at six o'clock the next morning. Harry turned it off quietly and dressed silently. He mustn't wake the Dudleys. He stole, he stole downstairs without turning on any of the lights. He was going to wait for the postman at the corner of Pivot Drive and get the letter from number four first. His heart hummed as he crept across the dark hall towards the door. <laughs> Harry leaped into the air. He trotted up some. He tr um, trotted on something big, and uh, squishy on the doormat. Anything alive? Something alive. Lights uh, clicked on the door uh, upstairs, and to his hor hair horror, Harry realized that the big squeaky something had been. <laughs> Uncle Harry's, uncle's, his uncle's face. Uncle Vernon had been lying at the foot of the front door in a sleeping bag, clearly making sure that Harry didn't do exactly what he had been trying to do. He shouted at Harry for about a half an hour and then uh, told him to go and make a cup of tea. Harry shuffled um, miserably off into the kitchen, and by the time he got back, the mail had already arrived, right into Uncle um, Vernon's lap. Harry could see three letters dressed in green ink. I want, he began, but Uncle Vernon 
was uh, tearing the letters into pieces before his eyes. Uncle Vernon didn't go to work that day. He stayed at home and nailed the mail uh, slot, nailed up the mail slot. See, he explained to Aunt Petunias through a um, mouthful of nails. If we can't, if they can't deliver them, they'll just give up. I'm not sure that will work, Vernon. Oh, those people's minds work in strange ways, Petunia. They'll, they're not like you and me, said Uncle Vernon, trying to, um, to knock in a nail with a piece of fruitcake and Petunia had just brought him. On Friday... No less than 12 letters arrived for Harry. As, the, as they couldn't go through the mail slot, they had been pushed into the door, slot, um, slotted through, through the sides. <laughs> and let there be light. Um, Uncle Vernon stayed in the home again. After burning all the letters, he got a hammer and a nail and boarded up the crack the cracks around the front and back doors so no one could go out. He hummed, tiptoed through the tulips as he worked and, and jumped at, a small, at small noises. On Saturday, things began to get out of hand. 24 letters to Harry found their way into the house, rolled up and hidden inside each other in each of the two dozen eggs that had that they had very confessed that their very confused mailman had handed Aunt Petunia through the living room window. While Uncle Vernon made furious telephone calls to the post office and the dairy trying to find someone to complain to, Uncle Petunia shredded the letters, Aunt Petunia sh shredded the letters in her fruit food processor. Who on earth wants to talk to you this badly? Dudley asked Harry in amusement. On Sunday morning, Uncle Vernon sat down at breakfast table, looking uh, tired and rather ill, but happy. No post on Sunday, he reminded them, cheerfully as he spread marmalade on his newspapers. No darn letters today. Something came whizzing down the um, kitchen chimney as he spoke and caught him sharply in the back of the head. The next moment, 30 or 40 letters came pelting out of the fireplace like, like bullets. Dars, the Darcy's ducked, but Harry kept into, but leapt into the air trying to catch one. Out, out! Uncle Vernon seized Harry around the waist and threw him into the hall. When Aunt Petunia and uh, Dudley ran out with, um, with their arms over their heads, Uncle Vernon slammed the door shut. They could hear the letters still uh, streaming into the room, bouncing off the walls and floors. That does it, said Uncle Vernon, trying to speak calmly, but pulling um, great tufts out of his mustache at the same time. I want you all back here in five minutes, ready to leave. We're going away. Just pack up your clothes. No arguments. He looked so dangerous with half a mustache mission, missing that no one dared argue. Ten, min ten minutes later, they had wrecked their way through the bound the bound up doors and were in the car uh, speedily towards the highway. Dudley was stuffed in the back seat. His father had hit, had hit him around the head for holding them up while he tried to, um, to pack his television, VCR, and computers into a sports bag. They drove and they drove. Even Aunt Petunia didn't dare ask where they were going. Every now and then, Uncle Vernon would take a sharp turn and drive in the opposite direction for a while. Shake him off, shake him off, he would mutter whatever, whenever, what, whenever he did this. He didn't stop to eat or drink all day. By nightfall, Dudley was howling. He'd never had such a bad day in his life. 
He was hungry. He missed his five television programs he'd wanted to see. He'd never gone so long without blowing up an alien on his computer. Uncle Vernon stopped at last outside a, a gloomy looking hotel and the, on the outskirts of a big city. Dudley and Harry shared a room with their twin beds, um, dumped uh, and damp, musty sheets. Dudley snored, but Harry st stayed awake, sitting on the window sill, staring down at the lights of a passing cars and wondering. They ate stale cornflakes and cold, uh, and cold rimmed to, and cold tin tomatoes on toast for breakfast the next morning. They had just finished when the owner of the hotel came up to their table. Excuse me, but it is one of you, Mr. H. Potter? Only I got about an un, uh, hundred of these on the front desk. She held up the letter so they could read them. Read the green ink, Mr. H. Potter, room 17, Riverview Hotel, Colkworth. Harry made a gulp but a grab at the letters for the letters, but Uncle Vernon knocked his hand out of them. The woman stared. I'll take them, said Uncle Vernon, standing up quickly and following her from the dining room. Wouldn't it be better just to go home, dear? Aunt Petunia suggested timidly hours later, but Uncle Vernon didn't seem to hear her. Exactly when, what he was looking for, none of them knew. He drove them to the middle of a forest, got out, looked around, shook his head, and put and got back into the car, and off they went again. The same thing happened in the middle of a plowed field. Halfway across a super uh, suspension bridge and at the top of a multi-level parking garage. Daddy's gone mad, hasn't he? Dudley asked Aunt Petunia. Dale uh, Dully later that asked Aunt Petunia Dully later that afternoon. Uncle Vernon Vernon had parked at the coast, locked them all in the car, and disappeared. It started to rain. Uh, great drops beat on the roof of the car. Dudley, Dudley's un, unveiled. It's Monday, he, he told his mom. The great um, Humbrus is, is on tonight. I want to stay somewhere um, with a television. Monday, that reminded Harry of something. It was Monday and you could usually count on Dudley to know the day of the week because of television. Then tomorrow, Tuesday, was Harry's 11th birthday. Of course, his 11th birthday was never exactly fun. Last year, the Darcy's had gotten him a coat hanger and a pair of Uncle Vernon's old socks. Still, you weren't 11 every day. Uncle Vernon was back, and he was smiling. He was also carrying a long, thin package and didn't answer Aunt Petunia when she asked what he had bought. Found the perfect place, he said. Come on, everyone, out. It was a very cold outside of the car. Uncle Vernon was pointing at what looked like a large rock way out on the sea. Perched on the top of the rock was the most miserable looking shack you could imagine. One thing was certain, there was no television there. Storms forecast for tonight, said Uncle Vernon, uh, gaily, uh, clapping his hands together. And this gentleman kindly agreed to lend us his boat. A toothless old man came ambling up to them, pointing, pointing with a ra uh, rather wicked grin and an old rowboat, at an old rowboat bobbing in the um, iron gray water below them. I've already got 
us um, some rations, said Uncle Vernon. So all's aboard. It was freezing in the boat. Icy sea spray and rain kept down, kept crept down their necks and chilly wind whipped their faces. After what seemed like hours, they reached the, the rock where Uncle Vernon, slip, um, slipping and slide, sliding, led the way to the broken down house. The inside was horrible. It smelled uh, strongly of seaweed and wind wisped through the, um, the gaps in the wooden walls. And the fireplace was damp and empty. There was only two rooms. Uncle Ver Vernon's rations turned out to be a bag of chips, each and four bananas. He turned to start a fire before the empty, um, but the empty bag chips just smoked and um, shriveled up. Could do with some of those letters here now, he said cheerfully. He was in a very good mood. Obviously, he thought nobody stood a chance of reaching them here at the, in the storm um, to deliver mail. Harry privately agreed, though thought that didn't throw the thought didn't cheer him up at all. As night fell, the promised storm blew up around them. Sprays from the high waves splattered the walls of the hut, and a fierce wind rattled the flimsy window. Aunt Petunia found a few moldy blankets in the second room and made up a bed for Dudley on the moth-written um, eaten sofa. She and Uncle Vernon went off to the lumpy bed next door, and Harry said was left to find the softest bit of floor he could and curl up under the thinnest, um, most ragged blanket. The storm raged more and more as the night went on. Harry couldn't sleep. He shivered and turned over, trying to get comfortable. His stomach rumbled with hunger. Dudley's snores were drawn by the low rolls of thunder that started near midnight. The lightning dial of the lighted dial of Dudley's watch, which was dangling over the edge of the sofa from his wrist, told Harry he'd he'd been eleven in ten he'd be eleven in ten minutes time. He lay and watched his birth, birthday tick nearer, wondering if du the Des uh, Dursleys would remember it all, wondering where the letter writer was now. Five minutes ago, Harry heard something crash outside. He hoped the roof wasn't going to fall in, although he might be warmer if it did. Four minutes ago, maybe the house in Privet Drive would be so full of letters that they, when they get back that he'd be able to steal one somehow. Three minutes ago was that the sea slapping hard on the rocks like that, or and two minutes to go, there was a funny uh, cranking noise. Was the rocks crumbling into the sea? One minute to go, and he'd be 11. 30 seconds, 20, 10, 9. Maybe he'd awake Dudley up just to annoy him. 3, Two, one, boom! The whole shack shook, and Harry sat bolt upright, staring at the door. Someone was outside, knocking on it. And that's chapter four. Wow, that got exciting. Um, can you imagine? How were those letters all getting to him? Um, and there was a the settings changed drastically depending on where they moved they went to they first went to they were in their house and uncle vernon got so mad with all the letters that he um nailed up the house and then he took the family and left because he could think of no other place you know that he couldn't stay in the house any longer he didn't want those letters um, you know, and finally they ended up 
in the shack in the middle on an island, a very small island in the middle of the ocean. Um, don't you wonder what's in those letters? Don't you? I'm sure uh, you're feeling like I am with Harry. Um, you know, what's going on? Why is he getting all the letters? You know, he has no relatives. And, um, and obviously you can see that the, the Darsleys are still treating him like he is nothing but a low life. You know, nobody, he doesn't even matter, but obviously he does. So, um, I'll read chapter four in a few minutes. Um, I hope everything's fine with you again. Talk to you later.